well, uh, we had information that you didn't. Which <laughs> <laughs> uh, was? You had Molinari. <laughs> correct. We had, we had Eduardo, who is, who is fantastic. <laughs> who is fantastic with the stats. And uh, it's true that early in the year, uh, if you compare both teams, uh, there was a, a difference, a notice, noticeable difference in, in the level of the game that was played by, by both teams. But that distance got reduced, reduced at the, as the year went by. Yeah. Uh, and by the time the Ryder Cup came, uh, actually, uh, we're pretty much even. Uh, you know, the 12 guys that uh, played in both teams, if you look at the scoring, uh, the average, uh, you know, the percentage of fairways mm -hmm. hit, the percentage of greens hit, uh, the putting and all that, all of a sudden we were uh, pretty much even uh, mm -hmm. before the week started. So we, we had that information, and on top of that, uh, whenever you play at home, you have a home advantage. Uh, not just the crowds, uh, but, but you can prepare the golf course yes. to your benefit. Yeah, uh, sure. And in that regard, uh, Marco Simone was set up in a way that uh, it favored uh, us in a, in a way. I mean, on paper, at least on paper. You uh, saw it on the T1. Correct. So, I mean, uh, fairways were, were narrow, uh, the rough was very severe. Uh, if you look at the stats, we were better uh, or a straighter drivers uh, out of the both teams, and, and we played, we prepared our golf course to our strengths. And uh, at, well, it, it was clear it, it paid off um, uh, uh, on Friday and Saturday, and it's true that uh, on Sunday, for for you know for one hour and you know 15 minutes, one hour and a half, uh, we struggled a bit uh, yeah. when. When Matt and, and Seb uh, lost on 18, uh, and then the next uh, three matches we were losing, uh, all of a sudden it looked like it was going to uh, end up, uh, you know, either you know with Tommy or, or Robert. So uh, it, it was tight at the end. I mean, yeah. that, that's the beauty about the Ryder Cup. It doesn't matter, you know, um, how much of a gap you you have for, uh, coming on Sunday. At the end of the day, on Sunday, you are playing for 12 points, uh, and, and the previous two days, uh, you you play for 16 points in total. So on, on Sunday, I mean, many things can happen. Even though we had a, a huge advantage, it's true, but uh, for a while, you know, it looked like it was going to be tight. They want something really tight. Uh, you know, it's, it's better for the audience. You know, uh, and, and in that regard, obviously, um, I understand that. But uh, uh, from my point of view, I think it was a fantastic Ryder Cup. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they played extraordinarily well. I have to say that uh, you know the European team played so so well. I mean, there were like six guys there that you know uh, play fantastic golf. Uh, and under uh, a huge amount of pressure. Um, some of the shots that uh, uh, they hit, uh, you know, on 17, you know, some of the shots on 17, on 16, uh, you know, when that amount of, with that amount of pressure, uh, yeah. knowing that, you know, the match is all square, is one up, one down, and, and you need to hit a, a fantastic shot and with a tough pin position. Or a chip in like like uh, John did on 16, uh, and then that followed that with a fantastic shot on, on 17 and almost hold it, and left it about three uh, three meters away from the hole, and, and then you know Scott hits this f wonderful shot, and actually you know John has to concede the putt. I mean, you know, it's, it's the 17th hole. It's, it's not the second hole or the fourth hole. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, it's the 17th hole and the match is all square and, and, and you see two of the best shots you can imagine on that hole. Uh, so, I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe from the outside uh, things Look are big. seeing differently, but, but I was there and I, I understand a bit of golf, I think. Uh, and <laughs> some of those shots were, were extraordinary, considering the, the situation and the circumstances. I 
have to take my hat off to, uh, off to Luke. I think he did a wonderful job. Uh, you know, he he looked after all the little details, uh, and there is, uh, as you said, uh, the locker room. I mean, when when you enter the locker room. Uh, there was lockers for the caddies and the vice captains and all that, and then at the far end there was a, that little locker, locker room where uh, only the players were there. And uh, one of the lockers, uh, it was uh, it was uh, Sevi, uh, the, the picture of Sevi uh, with a with a shirt that the last shirt he wore uh, at the Ryder Cup in '95. So. Uh, you know, those little things, you know, they mean a lot. I mean, obviously, and on top of that, there was so much work uh, behind the scenes, uh, you know, uh, at the team room, you know, the pictures, the lines. I mean, if you took the time to really, uh, you know, look at those pictures and, and read those lines, uh, you know, you find inspiration for sure. So all, all those little things um, create a team spirit, and uh, the players uh, get a better sense of of the history of the event, uh, what it means to us, uh, to Euro to us Europeans in general, uh, and it's, it's, that's why the Ryder Cup is, is so unique. I mean, it's it's very special for for all the people that came before us, uh, and we're. Well, we're trying to pass the, the torch to, to the new generations, but uh, the, they are very aware of, uh, of the history of the Ryder Cup, the people that played there before, what they did. Uh, you know, you have inspirational uh, videos uh, that are shown uh, to the players, uh, and those are moments that, uh, you know, uh, are unique and they stay within the team and in, in the minds and the memories of every player. I'm very nervous, very nervous. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard, you know, you play major events and at that level, obviously, uh, but when you are when you are standing on that first tee, uh, I don't think there is any other event where you are as nervous as that. <laughs> everybody, everybody, doesn't matter if you are Tiger Woods or, or Seve Ballesteros, or, it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, when you're standing on that first tee, uh, you know what you're playing for. Uh, you're not playing for yourself. I mean, you're playing for, for a bigger uh, goal, uh, let's put it that way. And we are all extremely nervous at that first tee. I think I did all right, uh, enjoying uh, that moment as much as I did. Uh, I was very conscious of uh, who I was playing with. Uh, obviously, I wasn't aware uh, of, of what the Ryder Cup was about. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I was 21 years old. I never, I had never seen the Ryder Cup before. Um, that was the first time that I realized uh, what the Ryder Cup was all about. All of a sudden, when you're walking from the Paring Green to the Festi, which is, you know, at uh, the Mirfield Village, it was like 30 yards away. Yeah, not even that, maybe. Through a gap of rope that is, you know, five feet wide. And you have, you know, people shouting at your ear, USA, USA, USA. <laughs> All of a sudden, I think, what the hell is, <laughs> what the hell is this? You know, uh, but you know, uh, Seve did a wonderful job. Uh, he he kept me calm. Uh, I remember very vividly what he said to me when we got first uh, to the tee. There, he looked at me and said, uh, "Jose, you just play your game. I will take care of the rest." <laughs>